Hi guys, I'm Top Table Steve and this is a painting tutorial video. Thanks for joining us guys, I am Top Table Steve as I have said. Now if this is the first time watching a Top Table video, make sure you subscribe, make sure you check out the links below so that you can help us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon and all of that malarkey. Uh, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, I posted up uh, some pictures of Space Wolves because I'm doing Space Wolves as a bit of a side project in my 40k journey. Um, and I posted uh, some pictures up on Facebook of the contrast efforts. A lot of you guys liked it and were asking questions. I thought it would be easier to do a video, so I did this. So let's get in front of the camera and show you how I did it. Okay guys, so here we go. I am going to be painting up this Space Wolf uh, Intercessor conversion, uh, very simple conversion, just added a few wolfy bits of wolf head. Um, but he is undercoated in grey sear, um, and we are about to put on the contrast paint Space Wolf's grey. Uh, so, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of some myths about contrast paints and mix them with water because that is all I've been doing, I've not had any problems. I do have uh, somewhere, let's have a look. I do have the medium. Um, I'm yet to, it, it's unopened, I'm yet to even try it. I will try it, and who knows, maybe um, this technique will work even better with the medium, but as of yet, I've not hit any problems using water, so you know, it ain't broke, why, why fix it? So I'm going to get some contrast paint on my palette. I'm not going to be shy with this because I've got, I'm just going to go all over the model. And then I'm going to get this, some water that's just got a little bit of flow aid in it. And I am going to put two drops and mix it up. As you can see, no problems. Uh, people were saying it was separating. I am not having that problem whatsoever. I'm using a very old big brush, which I got from the pound store, because I am just going to start slapping this on. Uh, and we're not going to be shy. As you've seen with all the other contrast paint videos. Um, if you see me stop and pause for a minute it is because I'm checking that the model is still in shot on the camera. I always find these painting on camera uh, videos very very difficult because I end up holding models in a very strange position. I suppose it just takes practice. Now I'm whacking it on as you can see. Not being shy at all. Because we've thinned it down, we do have a little bit more time to um, play with it. I'm going to get plenty in and around the head there because I want that shaded. <coughs> Excuse me. Hay fever has kicked in today, so if I'm sneezing and coughing, I do apologise. And as you can see, we mixed quite a lot of paint and already we are almost out. Luckily, I've just got the back part left to do. That is on. And now I'm just going to go and mop some bits that just look. Let me worry about that because I can get painted over. Some bits that just look like they're unnaturally pooling in the wrong areas, if that makes sense. Like pooling where highlights should be. It's not life or death if you miss some at this stage because we will sort that out later. But the neater you are here, the easier. It will make your job later on in the process. So, oh, <laughs> I do have an arm there. That would have been a schoolboy error and a half, wouldn't it? So we're going to get that on there. Anywhere that you're going to have armor plates. And I've got this on an armature and I'm going to bend it down so that the arm sits the right way so that gravity can do a job and the um, moisture from the paint can drop down and settle on the undersides of <coughs> excuse me, the model. So that is done and that took what, a minute? So we're going to let that dry fully, um, I do have another hand there. Uh, we're going to let this dry fully. I've, I do sometimes speed it up using a hairdryer. I, I'm not 
convinced that it doesn't not ruin but I think you get a better result if you're letting it dry naturally if that makes sense cool so we're gonna let that dry and then we'll come back okay so the contrast space was great it's almost dry um, I need to go back over the uh, head uh, from the pot just to get that back to a neutral gray say but before I do that I want to get more shade just in underneath the chin now an option here would be to not attach the head yet uh, but because I had all my models put together that wasn't an option so we are just going to go in with some black templar and again we're going to get some on our palette we're going to use some water and we're going to mix that up and all we're going to do is get that in and we're not worried at this stage about getting it on the head or the face because we're going to re-apply the grey sear with a brush. I just want to add some shade. It is quite awkward but it's well worth doing. So that will do me nicely. So we'll let that dry and then we'll come back. I will also recoat the head in grey sear because you don't really need to see that and then we'll come back. Okay, so we've reset the head and the face and some parts of the rifle um, to grey sear. The um, Space Wall's grey is almost dry. Well, it's pretty much dry now. We can move on to the next stage. The next stage is the bit that makes all the difference in my eyes. All that looks quite smooth and I think that if you actually watered that down more and went at it with two coats rather than the one which I've put on it um, I think you'd get a very very smooth coat um, even on the shoulder pads but the shoulder pads are irrelevant because um, I paint over mine with colours like so um, so the next stage this is the magic stage we are going to use Model Air um, Sky Blue through an airbrush so here we go so the trick here is we want to any parts I'm going to do the shoulder pads because even though I'm going to paint over them, it's the easiest to demonstrate. So you can see some of the blotchy areas on the shoulder pads uh, that show up that you've used contrast. So I'm just going to hit them with a very fine blast of the sky blue and it takes that away, can you see? And then maybe on the knees. And then I just like to add a little line of highlight down each side of the shin guard and on the back of the leg. And on each side of the um, backpack. Can you see that? Again, I'll just do the shoulder pad so you can see the difference. Now it's only very subtle, but it just makes a massive difference uh, to the end result, I think. So I'll do the toe caps, um, probably the larger areas, so here and along the back. And that is pretty much it. That's as much as I'm going to do with the airbrush, but it just finishes everything off and it leaves a nice, sorry for the word, contrast between the light and the dark. Uh, lining so from there that's pretty much the armor almost done okay so from here the next stage I'm going to go to is Gulliman's flesh which I'm going to do the head in uh, the full face I'm going to cover it all and I'm going to do two coats of this watered down um, and then from there I'm going to go back to Black Templar and I'm going to do the gun casing so I'll crack on with that as you can see I'm still using this large brush because it just gets paint where I want it quick and fairly even that's the thing with these contrasts it is a totally different way of painting uh, you're so used to you know getting paint a lot of the paint off your brush before it goes anywhere near the model um, contrast paints it's kind of the opposite to an extent um, but then at the same time I find if you try and do it in one hit you can ruin the model. So that's the first pass with the Gulliman's Flesh and now I'll move on to the black. For me I think this is going to be the best way um, 
to utilise the contrast paints, not using them standalone by uh, mixing them um, with your standard painting. Again, it's very unnatural for me to, to hold the model and the paintbrush in this manner. Um, but I have to do it to get on camera. So apologies if I do look slightly odd. I feel odd if that's any, uh, any help. Again, using a big brush, it's not as bad as you think. It's got a decent point and these brushes are not too bad. Now, because I've watered it down, this is one that will definitely need more coats. As you can see, you know, that doesn't look like black at all. But I still prefer to water it down. I just think it goes on smoother. Um, so we'll let that dry and we'll come back. Okay, so I've given the gun case and another run over of uh, Black Templar and the face of Gilliman's Flesh. So while that's drying, um, I'm going to jump onto the gold areas, which I'm going to use Retribute Armour, um, mixed with a tiny bit of water just to help it move more. I'm going to use um, a number two brush for this. So we get some paint on my palette. I can use some of this water here. Go. and we are just going to start painting in the gold areas so the eagle on the chest now this stage obviously now your armor's done you do have to be fairly neat because that's one thing I will say if you do slip up it can be rectified it's not you know I've done it it's it's doable but it's a bit of a pain so try and be careful when you are doing this stage so I'll speed the camera up and get these bits done So that's the gold pieces done and for the brown areas which is what I do the belt and the um, gun holster in um, I will be using uh, Vallejo model colour burnt umber as the base and I'll be highlighting in Vallejo model colour flat earth. So I'll crack on and get that done, we'll get some of the burnt umber on my palette. These definitely do need water, uh, they're quite thick. Just get myself some there, some more on my brush. Mix it, make sure you give it a good mix. A bit too much paint on my brush there, but I'll live. And then we're just going to pick out all the leather areas again, trying to be as neat as possible. And you'll need to give these two coats. So I'll speed the camera up while I get this bit done. And we are now going to move into the silver areas. For the silver areas I am going to be using Lead Belcher. So that's all the silver bits done on the marine itself. We'll now do the silver parts on the gun. So that's the browns and the silver's done. Um, we are now going to pick out some of the grey, sort of the under armour suit and things like that. Um, so I'll just grab my paint for that. And for this we'll use Vallejo model colour dark blue grey. And we need to thin this down quite a bit and use a nice uh, brush that's got a nice point on it. Because we've got to get into fiddly little areas. So we'll get that thinned down. And we start applying it sort of you know inside the elbows, just where you can see the ribbed undersuit, backs of the knees, just around the um, the groin and places like that. So we'll get that all on. And then um, yeah, I may as well speed up.
for you. It's not very exciting to watch. Okay, so that's all the grey areas done. We are now going to do the um, the seal paperwork in uh, a shabti bone, and we will do the actual <coughs> excuse me um, wax stamp in Mephiston red. Okay, so we're just going to go back to the burnt umber because I did forget about the. Um, Rabbit's foot detailing on the gun. So we'll just get a bigger brush and get that on. Nice. Okay, so that's done. Um, I'm going to make a decision on the hair colour of this um, Space Wolf and then we'll come back. Okay, so I lost my camera there for a second, so I'm not sure what I missed, so I'll just over overview what I've done. Uh, the wax purity seal uh, has been done in a shabti bone and my fist and red. Um, I've done uh, the hair in a base coat of storm vermin fur and highlighted was Celestra Grey. Um, I've also just added the eyes uh, with a little dot of white and some teeth and just put some uh, dark brown wash inside the mouth and around the uh, eye sockets and that is as far as we've gone uh, thus far so at this stage now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding washes so we're going to start with um, Agrax Earth Shade I think and we're going to go over the gold breast on the breastplate we're going to go over all the browns we're going to go over the um, Purity Seal uh, the red and the Ashabti Bone uh, we're going to go over all the silver um, Bear with me on this because we're going to hit the silver with Null Oil and uh, Agrax for Agrax first. So, um, yeah, we'll crack on with that now. So, first off, easy stuff, I'm going to go straight in over the browns and the greys. I'm going to get right in to all the creases and recesses to add that bit of shadow. And this will just act as a blender as well for our highlights. So, if you weren't overly neat with your highlights um, this will help out a little bit and over the grey under armour just try and be careful not to let it bleed, I know it's difficult not to let it bleed onto the raised panels of your armour and I can already see <laughs> I missed the backs of the knees uh, with the grey, so I'm going to go back in in a second and do that. I'll just finish with this um, Agrax and go all over the silver parts with Agrax as well. Onto the breastplate. Now try and be careful here because again this is an area where it would be prone to bleeding onto your raised areas, so just Take your time, hone your brush control and keep it on the breastplate. And don't forget the little belt buckle there. You want that nice and shaded and to stand out. Okay. Onto the silver areas on the backpack. And what you'll see is that the reason that we do these, it just starts to define them against background start to get some nice shadows and the agrax which is really cool Yeah, and there we go. 
Right, we're going to let that dry and we're going to come back in with null oil. So here we go with an null oil. I'm going to get some of this on our palette. We're going to thin it down a little bit with some water. Get rid of some of the excess off the brush. And we're going to start going back over the metal areas. Yeah, so just back over the areas that you've already done with the uh, Agrax and also with the non oil you can go into your grey under armour bits uh, unless you like me and you forget the backs of the knees which I still have to go back and do uh, but I'll do that in a second uh, so just try and be as methodical as you can uh, with this part it is easy to forget bits but you kind of notice them as you're going around the model and the more you do it once, I mean this technique is going to be ideal for me for doing probably six, seven at a time. It kind of you kind of get a routine, and you can't do it without even thinking. So, if you're wondering why I do the Agrax first on the metal. It's kind of a pre-shade to the shade, if that makes sense. And it just, for me, gives a really nice tarnished look to the metal, which I really like. So I'm just going to get this on here now, and then I'm going to go back into the backs of these knees. Um, which I'll do now off camera. So we've got the washes done. Um, the next step I'm going to do here now, um, just just to get it on there and start to get some of the um, the, the final look, uh, looking as it should, is the two shoulder pads. So I'll do the um, left hand shoulder pad in the Citadel Avaland Sunset Two Thin Coats, and the right shoulder pad in Vallejo Model Color Hull Red again Two Thin Coats. So um, we'll get that done and then we'll come back. Okay, so we've got some colour on the shoulder pads, as you can see. Um, what we're going to do is, before we apply a wash to them of um, Agrax Sershay to both shoulder pads, we're going to go back to the airbrush, and we are going to use Vallejo Medium Yellow on the yellow pad, and we are going to use uh, it's just Vallejo Modeler Red RLM 23 on the, um, the dark brown red shoulder pad. So we're going with the yellow. Make sure we've got some. And there we go. Now, as you can see, we've got a little bit of overbleed. I'll show you that onto the armour. So, we're going to tidy that up and we are going to go back to the colour that we used at the highlight. I'm just going to go in with a brush and uh, tidy that up. So, that will be just so you don't remember, Leo Model Air Sky Blue, but we're gonna, even though it's an air paint, we're gonna go in with a brush. The armor. And what we can do while we're here is just edge a highlight this rim. Now it's personal preference, you could go and edge highlight all your edges if you wanted to, but this tutorial is about getting your minis done quick to uh, gaming standard, so I'm not going to go around and edge highlight everything Also, although I have done, I've not gotten to hand but I have done on another miniature and it does look really effective but uh, I need a technique that's going to get them all done quick for me so that's that, so we'll come back in a second so the next paint we're going to use is Citadel Flayed One Flesh I'm going to need a very tiny amount of this on our brush and this is just to pick out the highlights on the purity seal we'll then pick, use the model air again but this time on a brush because it's a brighter red and we'll highlight the purity seal like so cool 
So the next colour we're going to go to is Stormhole Silver. Now this is going to be used as, I want to say highlight, but it's more of a highlight stroke weathering. So we're going to use a fine brush, get some of the silver on our brush, and we're just going to pick out the raised edges as you would with a highlight. And we're also going to pick out the edges using the silver on the gold as well. I highlight all my gold with silver because, well numerous reasons, I like the finish that it gives but what I can also do if I'm a little bit heavy handed like I'm in some spots there is go over it again <coughs> excuse me with uh, null oil or seraphin sepia and that takes that silver back down to a gold colour uh, so let's have a look so we'll just pick out the edges here There we go. Okay, so we're going to go in with some seraphin sepia, like I said. We're going to hit the gold up just to tone that silver highlight down. We're also going to uh, shade the shoulder pads with the sepia. And we're going to get it all over. And we're going to mop it up. Keep it tidy. CP is really nice on the gold and the silver. Gives it a really nice weathered look. So make sure you get that up. Try and make sure the shade stays just in the crease between the rim. And we'll go on to the red. on the ego motif on the gun. That's looking good. I like it. So we're getting there now. It's starting to take shape. Um, I think we're going to attach the gun to the main body now um, and probably rebase him. And um, yeah, we'll come back in a second. So here we are guys, nice and quick, and I think uh, you get a very, very good uh, result from it. Um, I'm really happy with them. So this guy is going to go with the rest of my uh, space walls, which I am sort of building as a side project, um, and they will be appearing on Top Table Gaming very, very soon. We're going to finish the Ultramarines and Death Guard narrative campaign, and who knows, Space Marines could possibly feature. Uh, you never know. So, guys, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Um, we really want to get as many people involved as we can. Get on the Facebook group, Top Table Gaming Community, and join that also. And just check out all the other links and different ways that you can follow and help us um, in the comment, not in the comments, in the information below the video, should I say. So, thank you for watching, guys. Um, and I look forward to seeing you soon. I've been Top Table Steve. Hope you've liked this tutorial. Um, and yeah. Let me know what you think below. Thank you. See you later.